What up, what up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Heart of a Lion podcast. I am your host, Jay, and I realized that I accidentally lied to y'all <laughs> at the end of the last episode. I told y'all that y'all can find me on YouTube at Mr. Highsmith86. That was a lie. You can surely find me on Instagram at Mr. Highsmith86. But on YouTube, you can just simply type in Jay Highsmith and I should pop right up. But I am <laughs> I am not. This podcast as of this moment is not on YouTube. I do have other content on there um, from previous years. But again, you can just type in uh, Jay Highsmith and not Mr. Highsmith 86. Um, also, you know, just, you know, I, I talked about, you know, procrastination and perfectionism and, you know, reasons why I had put off the podcast. And it just, you know, one thing, um, one reason why I kept putting it off before, because I kept trying to debate whether or not I wanted to have this as an audio or video podcast. And then I just got to a point where I was just like, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and create, <laughs> you know, if I keep trying to, to determine, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Then I'm just not going to do it. So hopefully one day this will be a, a video podcast as well. But for right now, we're just going to do audio and maybe just the audio will be on YouTube. But, you know, until that time comes, it just it just is what it is. Thank you for listening. However you listen. But for today, what we're going to talk about is, you know, me going to church, but also my Jesus, not my Jesus. He is my Jesus, but <laughs> my 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 journey of uh, coming to Jesus. And for me, it started uh, just a as a kid, you know, in the sense that, you know, I, I, my, I would go to church with my grandmother. I would also go to church with my mom, two different churches. Um, but with my grandmother specifically, I would, you know, I would stay at her house during the summers and stay over there some weekends. And I absolutely love going to church with her, not because I like going to Sunday school or not because I like going to church specifically, but her church had a bowling alley in it. It, it might still have a bowling alley in it, but you know, it, it had a bowling alley in it and it was just something to always look forward to. Like anytime there was some type of church function or, or church event, you know, I knew that there was a great chance that I was probably going to be able to bowl. And for me, it was just it was always a lot of fun, always had so much fun at her church. Um, the church that I would go to with my mom, it was a church that was a staple um, in our community. Um, and we would go. Um, uh, but I, I hated going. Um, if it was just the Sunday service, I didn't mind going. I would just go. I would play my Sega Game Gear during service and I would tune everything out. Um, but when it was actually Sunday school, oh, I hated going to Sunday school. And the reason why I hated going to Sunday school, it wasn't because anybody did anything wrong. It was just more so because because I didn't go often. Whenever I did go, they would always ask me to pray. And I'm just like, I don't know how to pray. So for me, it was intimidating and like just being put on the spot. It made me feel like I don't want to be here. I don't like being put on the spot, even to this day. Like I don't really like being put on the spot, but I handle a lot better now than I did then, you know, so because I didn't like being uh, put on the spot to pray and I, because I didn't because I felt like I didn't know how to pray. What I would do as a result of that is when the weekend when Sundays would come around, I would stay up until like three, four, five, sometimes six o'clock in the morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, just so that way I would be too tired to get up and go to church the next day. Or I would pull the blanket over my head uh, and pretend I was asleep just so that way uh, my mom, you know, in, in the hopes that my mom would not wake me up the next morning. Like I'm talking about like laying still sometimes for over an hour just to pretend <laughs> <laughs> like I'm asleep so I wouldn't have to go to church. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It just was what it was. But yeah, I, I did not like going to uh, Sunday school. Now, when I would go just to the church, you know, I, I loved, again, I loved going. And most times I did play my game gear. Um, but what I do remember about that time was that the pastor was a, was phenomenal and he was very well respected. His son was actually uh, in my class. I don't remember if we were friends, but he was in uh, my class um, in elementary school. And I remember that there was some type of, I don't want to say scandal, but there was some type of church drama. And next thing we, we I know 
not only is the pastor gone from the church, but they had moved from the area. And because he was gone, now we had to find a new a new pastor. And I'm saying we like it was my church. It wasn't like really our church because we weren't members. We would just go. But, you know, they had they had to find a new pastor. And I remember they would have a new pastor. Or excuse me. They have a guest pastor every week until they settled on a new pastor. And the pastor, the initial pastor leaving isn't what deters from going it was once they finally chose a pastor, my mom just felt like he wasn't the pastor for her. Like she wasn't getting anything out of it. And as a result, we ended up just, we just stopped going. We stopped going to church. Um, and it just was what it was. I don't remember how old I was at this point. Um, maybe, I don't know, eight, eight or nine, somewhere around there. Uh, and again, it just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't for us at that time. And I didn't, outside of going to church with my grandmother here and there, like I, I didn't really go to church anymore until I was a teen. And it, I would go to church with uh, some friends of mine who lived a few houses down. Uh, they would go to church um, and I would go with them, with them sometimes. But their church services, now I'm going to say this and I don't mean any disrespect, but uh, they went to an African church. And if you know anything about African churches, their services aren't the shortest. You know, I, I would go with them to church. Service would start at 11. And sometimes I'm not getting home until like four or five. And I just remember like these were such long days because it was it was two, three hours of a service. And then following that, we would have like one and a half to two hours of Sunday school. And I'm just like, I'm just ready to go. So it didn't mean that I stopped going. I would definitely go with them to church. But when I would go, I would often find myself the nearest wall and lean my head up against the wall and go to sleep during the service. And I would be good to go after the service. But for that service, man, I was knocked out. <laughs> um, But, you know, it, it, it was cool. And then um, it used to be a group of us that hung out in the neighborhood, um, not in relation to the the, uh, the ones I went to the African church with, but it was me, my homie Vaughn, Justin, and Andrew. Uh, Justin and Andrew uh, are brothers, and then me and Justin were best friends, and Vaughn and Andrew were best friends. But the four of us hung out, and Vaughn and his family would go to church. And for the longest time, Vaughn would invite me to church, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not going. And I don't know why I would go. I would go with um, the other family, but I wouldn't go with Vaughn and his family. I don't know if it's because I was like, man, I'll be around you all the time. I ain't going to your church because I knew how we were. Like, I knew how we were out in the neighborhood. So I was like, why would I go with you to church? I, I don't know if that was it or if it was just like my spirit just rejecting it. Um, I don't know. But, you know, after a while, Andrew started going with Vaughn the church. And then, at, then after a while, Justin started going within the church and I was just the odd man out and they would invite me to stuff. And I just, I, I, I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, then one year they invited me to Kings Dominion with the church and I was like, okay, cool. I'll go. But then I, they were like, well, nah, he's, he's not a, he's not uh I can't remember if it was because I was a member or because I was too late or something. I don't know. But I was like, man, whatever. I ain't going to go anyway. Um, and then I remember the last thing before I had actually started going to church was um, I went with them to go see the Passion of the Christ in theaters. And I remember feeling like, man, this is really deep. But for me, it still didn't strike me as like like the weight of it and um, how powerful it was. Like it still didn't really strike me because, again, at that point, like I wasn't a Christian, like it just it's like man, this is really deep, man, this is really powerful. And everybody I was with, like had some type of emotional reaction. Where for me, it was just like a, a processing moment, but it still didn't really strike me as then like, I need to be going to church or I need to give my, give my life to Jesus. Like I, I didn't have any of those feelings. It was just like, okay, dang. And just process it for the rest of the night. And that was it. But shortly, I think it was the day before, my 18th birthday, uh, I'm an Easter baby. So my birthday is always around Easter. 
Um, so I think it was the day before my 18th birthday and Vaughn's mom asked me, she was like, you know, when are you going to go with us to church? And I was like, uh, I'll go Sunday. <laughs> and it was just, I think it was just a matter of respect um, because I didn't know her well, but I respected her. And anybody else who would try to talk to me about, you know, church or Jesus, like I, I wanted to hear none of it. Um, prior to this, I remember there was a time that I was hanging out with Vaughn and we went to some girl's house. I don't remember why we went. I don't know if he was getting his hair done or I don't remember why we went to this girl's house. But while we were there, her dad came out and just started talking about Jesus, started talking to me about Bible and scripture and all that. And I just kept thinking to myself, why is this man talking to me? I don't want to hear none of this. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear anything he has to say. Like, please stop talking to me. And I didn't I didn't know it. And he was asking me a bunch of questions. And it made me feel like I was back in Sunday school again. It's like, I don't I don't know the answer to these questions. Like, please stop asking me these questions because, again, I don't like being put on the spot. So it just like that being said, I never went to this person's house again. I was like, uh, absolutely not. It, <laughs> I want no dealings with this man. Um, but again, fast forwarding it back to that present time when she asked me, I was like, uh, I'll go this Sunday. And that Sunday just so happened to be Easter Sunday. So. I ended up going, uh, going within the church and I don't remember anything about the service. Honestly, I just remember that there were so many youth and young adults at that time. And it was just like, wow, like this is pretty cool. Cause I was just used to hanging out with people in the neighborhood, but man, hanging out in the neighborhood, like people wasn't on nothing, man. Like we just like, it was really just, you play basketball, you might chill but it was also like other extracurricular stuff too, whether it was fighting or just other stuff that was going on. And I honestly just didn't feel like always being around that. So to know that there were so many youth and young adults at the church who I could potentially hang out with, I was like, okay, you know, we'll see where this goes. And almost immediately I had like, just kind of just got plugged in right away. Like I think, you know, I went that Easter Sunday and I think that following Thursday um, they had choir rehearsal, so I decided to go to choir rehearsal to see what the choir was about, and um, had just like immediately kind kind of got like immersed in it. And again, I don't know nothing about nothing, you know. I'm just here because like th th this is where my friends are, and but I joined the choir and was started to sing with them. And a month later, I remember that we were at the choir director's house, and while we were at the choir director's house, it was some type of drama or some nonsense that, that happened. And I just remember I was seeing people like storming, you know, marching off in different directions, upset with attitudes and breaking down, whatever, da, da, da. Next thing I know, I didn't know this now, but looking back at it, I could tell like Holy Spirit came into the place and just people just started breaking down and crying and repenting, apologizing and all that. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to go sit in this room over here. Cause like I started to feel something, but I didn't know what it was that I felt. And, um, I just like sat down on the couch and put my head down. And I remember, um, it was a husband and wife team and the wife came to me and she said, um, Jay, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. And then she said, I can't remember how exactly she asked, but essentially asked me if, you know, I had a relationship with Jesus. And I was like, no. And she was like, do you want to have a relationship with Jesus? And I said, yes. I think I said yes, because that's how I felt in that moment. But I still didn't really know what it meant, you know, but I said yes. And she led me to salvation. Um, I went home that night and I went about my day. And the next morning I was called up to the church for giving my life to Christ. Um, I think a few weeks later, um, or by the end of that month, I had gotten baptized. Uh, but again, like I have, I have no meaning of what this stuff really means. Like I know that I've, at this point I've given my life to Christ because that's what I said. And I know that I'm going to church, but I, like, I still don't really know what that means. Like, what does that mean for me? Um, and, uh, after a while, uh, I would say, I don't know, maybe by the summertime, this was like April. So maybe by the April when I started going to church, May when this encounter happened. And then by the summertime, I think I had just stopped going. Like I would only go when um, 
I would only go when there was choir rehearsal or we would have to sing on Sunday. But outside of that, I just wasn't going. And I was just going back to what I was doing before, you know, hanging out, playing basketball, going to parties and different things like that, um, or hanging out with friends who weren't going to church or whatever. And it's so funny because the thing that 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 actually got me going back to church, it wasn't that anything uh, somebody said to me. Um, but what happened was, is that we used to have the chores that I would do for my dad. I used to have to do them on Saturday. So it would be like cutting grass. You know, I might have to wash a truck or do whatever. I, I typically had to do all that on Saturdays. At some point, he stopped doing it on Saturdays and he wanted me to start doing it on Sundays. And in my mind, I was like, light bulb went off. And I'm like, OK, well, if I if Sundays is the day that I have to do this. If I start going back to church, I don't have to do this no more. <laughs> like that was my mindset. It's like if I start doing this on Sundays, then if I start going back to church on Sundays, then I don't have to do these chores anymore. You know, it could have been he could have easily been like, we're going to do it on Saturdays. But I was just like, I'll just start going back to church. And that's what I did. I started going back to church and I was consistent with being in church every Sunday. And um my dad never asked me to, to do the chores on Sundays anymore. Either he would have my brothers do it or I would do it on a Saturday. And it just that's what it was. And, you know, I was consistent from that moment, you know, going to church. Um, I don't know how long I don't remember how long I was out of not going to church regularly. I don't remember if it was months or if it was about a year. So I, I really don't remember. But um, from the time that. I had started going to church, I think, until I say it was about, I think, we'll say about two years. In these two years that I, from the time I had started going to church, I, it was like, I'm going, I'm singing, I'm, I'm spending time with people, I'm hanging out with people, you know, we're doing all these things, like we're traveling to different churches and all these things. And for me... I, I don't really feel like I don't think that there was ever really a real change for me. Like, I mean, I'm going to, to Sunday school. I'm going to vacation Bible school. I'm singing on Sundays. I'm hanging out with people from church. But I didn't really feel like there was a change. When I look back at it, like there really was no change. Um, and it wasn't until there was a lock in in the summer of 2006. Uh, I may be old to some people. But, yeah, there was a lock in in the summer of 2006. And that was the first time that I had, I had ever opened my Bible and the Bible that I had gotten um, in 2004 from my high school graduation from the church. Um, or excuse me, I graduated from high school. The church gave me a Bible, but that was the first time I had ever opened my Bible. And I only brought it with me because I felt like we might I might need it. And I was like, well, I need to know what the Bible says. So I read some of the first chapter or first couple of chapters of Genesis um, so yeah, and that weekend was such a fun weekend. Uh, I definitely did not need my Bible for that weekend, but it was such a fun weekend, but I'm just using it as a landmark. Like that was the first time I had ever opened my, my Bible and, you know, we progress on from 2006 into 2007. And what I want to say is this from two, from 2004, when I first got saved, into 2007, when I look back at it, I don't think, I guess in a, in some regards, I would look at it and say, yes, I had, a, I was saved, but I, I still didn't have a relationship. Like it wasn't really a coming to Jesus for me yet. And I feel like, and again, like this is no disrespect. I don't, I don't want it to come across as negative, but I don't really, to me, it seemed like uh, the way Jesus was talked about for me or the way relationship with God was talked about with, for me, it came across as more of a, a scaring you out of hell versus loving you into heaven type of thing. And because of how I was before I going to church, I was like, I didn't care if I went to hell. So it's like, how can you scare somebody out of hell if they're content with going there? So again, for me, like it just, 
it did I did it didn't bother me like when you know when when they would say certain things about you know salvation or being free or going to heaven or this and the third like none of that worked for me so I think the love of God was right was what I needed more than anything back then but I say all that to say so some friends of mine or some some people at the, some of the other youth at the church were talking about um this Todd Tripper retreat or you know what they were Todd Tripper fans and I remember that I saw that Todd Tripper was having a, a retreat coming up, a winter, uh, winter, winter, no victory, winter break retreat. And I was not a Todd Tripper fan at that time, but I knew that they were. So I told them about it. Everybody was super excited. So we were like, let's go. Um, it was me, my sister, and a few other people from the church. And again, I felt how I felt. You know, back then, it was just like, it is what it is, whatever. And I was not a Thai fan. But that Sunday, sir, it, the, the retreat started that Friday. That Sunday, I don't remember what Ty said. All I remember is he called the men up to the front. This is at the service, towards the end of the service. He called the men up to the front. And he began to pray and prophesy over people. And I don't know what any of this terminology as far as prophesying or any of that stuff. Like, I, I have no, you know, knowledge or, you know, wording for what that is back then. But all I remember is, like, he touched my stomach and he prayed over me and it felt like something broke. Like, he, as he was praying, like, I just, like, I just felt like the power. I didn't, again, I didn't know this at the time, but I felt the power of God come over me. And... Like, I just remember when he was done, like I fell to the ground in a ball, like I'm curled up in a little ball and I'm just bawling. Like my eye, I, my eyes are filled with tears. I'm bawling. I'm crying. I'm like, it's like a shout, like a scream. I, I can't even mimic it. Like that's how, like that's how intense it was. But I just remember I had this loud, extremely loud, extremely long cry that I let out. And... I don't know how long I was on the ground for. I may have been on the ground for like 10, 15 minutes. And then once I got up, um, uh, my friend Justin, you know, he was there. And another friend of ours, Mallory, was there. And I just remember I had my arms around them. And I was like, I was singing, I was worshiping, but I was still crying. But I had, that was the first time I had ever experienced the power of God. I had ever experienced the Holy Spirit. Now, mind you, our church was a church where like you would see people uh shouting every Sunday you would see people speaking in tongues you would see people falling out you could feel the Holy Spirit moving but there's a difference between feeling the presence of God or the Holy Spirit every week and then having a personal encounter when the, when uh when the presence of God is in the room I had a personal encounter for the first time with the Holy Spirit and it was one of the most powerful moments I've I've ever had. And from that moment forward, it was like something broke, but something's different. Something's new. And I knew when I look back at it now, I know that I couldn't do things the way I did things before. You know, I, I began to see things differently. I began to to um I began to to look at life differently. You know, I, I, I began to to see things from a spiritual lens and not just from a natural lens. I began to have encounters for th with things that I didn't have verbiage for. I began to have encounter with things that I didn't have knowledge of. I began to have encounter with things and it's like, yo, what is this? You know, and when I would tell people like the things that I was encountering, they were like, yeah, that's a powerful testimony. But like, I, I didn't, I didn't even know that then that I was looking for answers. But when I look back at it now, it's like I wish people, you know, could have like helped me like through that process of, you know, this is what you're experiencing. This is why you're experiencing. This is what you should do when you experience these different things. Um, but what I will say is, man, God is so good because through that through that process of my eyes being open, God really began to do a work on me. He really began to do a work on me. And I mean, there was a lot of pruning, you know, removing people and things from my life that didn't need to be there, cutting back people and things in my life that needed to be cut back. And just, man, it was such an eye opening experience. And that I will say I got I started going to church in 2004 
And that's the moment I gave my life to Christ. But 2007 is my real coming to Jesus moment. And my life has not been the same since then. And I am so grateful to God that he kept me in those three years because again, I was, I was going to church, but I was still living a life like hell. Um, and for those three years, it doesn't mean that I was like, you know, out there getting high and drunk and all that stuff. I've actually never smoked ever in my life. Um, but I got at the end of the day, I like, I was still sinning, you know, still, you know, uh, going to parties, still hanging out with people I shouldn't, still be in places that I shouldn't be, you know, still entertaining people and things that I shouldn't, you know, I was just out there just being a young, just being a young adult, you know, living the worldly life. And I didn't know any better because I won't say because anybody didn't tell me it was just the way it was presented to me. It didn't make me feel like, um, it didn't make me feel like uh, there, I'm not gonna say that there wasn't a real consequence because there was real consequences, but it didn't make me feel like this is something I need to adhere to or I need to change. Uh, it was that encounter with the Holy Spirit at Tatra's retreat in early 2007 that really made me feel like, yo, this, <laughs> this, like, this is how I need to move forward. Like, th I need to begin to do things differently. Everything I thought I knew, I don't, like, I was wrong about. And now I need to learn the things of God. You know, and I found myself with a lot of idle time, a lot, a lot of idle Jesus time. You know, I don't mean I was idolizing Jesus, but um, rather the idle time I had was spent with Jesus, spent reading the Bible, um, spent, you know, praying just because I'm trying to, I, I was trying to discover Jesus, you know? Um, but yeah, so that, that's it. That, that, that's my story. Um, of course there's more, of course there's more to unpack. Of course there's more testimonies to share, but you know, I'll, I'll save those for another podcast on another day. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's where we are. Um, I can say what I am happy to say. I probably should have said this earlier is that, you know, the podcast is on uh, spot, Spotify. It is on Apple Music. It is on Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So you can listen to it to those places. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get it everywhere. But, you know, it's still it's still new. Uh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, but it is the heart of a lion podcast. You can find it on any one of those places. Um, or you can just type in H O A L podcast. So thank you all for tuning in again. Thank you for listening to my coming to Jesus story. Um, feel free to ask me questions. Um, I think Spotify has an option where you can ask me questions. And if you do that, I'll be, I would love to answer them, um, at the beginning of each episode. So again, thank y'all for tuning in. My name is Jay until next time.